Hello everyone, my name is Vladimir Kovanko, I'm a data scientist at Vimy and Wukmi. And the theme of my today's speech is expanding emotional attitudes through the task of image captioning. Before starting, let's briefly discuss the agenda of today's speech. We will speak about the contributions of the work, description of the goal and theory wanted to prove. We will touch on the previous work review, data collection process. We will have an overview of pretend models, additional biometric features, training details, and speak about the experimental results along with future work. Before jumping into the contributions of our work, we should understand that image understanding is the process of interpreting regions or objects to figure out what's happening in the image. And this may include figuring out what objects are, the special relationship to each other, and other things noted in the first reference of the slides. And this statement implies that one of the definitions of scene understanding is the capability of describing its context. We then formulate our theory as follows. A model which can describe the emotional attitude based on the image is capable of understanding this emotional attitude. And in order to prove it, we collect a new data set of image text pairs called image cup. Specifically, in the way the text explicitly or implicitly explains the emotional flavor or attitude and its causes on the image. We then solve the task of image caption using it to prove the theory. Our contributions are twofold. We first of all introduce a small size data set image cup, which is based on IMDb Wiki 1, and then we provide a, and conduct a set of experiments on the task of image captioning based on features which are excited from the sort of models. And we also saw, show that adding biometric features as gender and emotions distributions improve the performance image captioning models. Uh, let's touch on the previous work. Uh, the first work, which is relevant to us, is the work of Nizam et al. Uh, which is called FaceCap image caption using facial expression analysis. In their work, uh, they used the features which are extracted from uh, faces, actually emotional features, and they are extracted by the uh, VGG network which is trained on the fair data set. So these uh, additional features are then uh, added as facial features to the initial hidden state of the OSTM network, and they also use a CNN to image net to decode the visual features of the image itself and plug it to the attention mechanism. As a result, uh, they are showing a great performance of Flickr Face 11K dataset, which is actually a sub dataset or sub split of the dataset of Flickr 30K, and shows that their particular changes uh, help to make uh, the captions uh, towards the vector of some emotions. The other work is the work of Matthew Sato, which uh, used switching OSTM mechanism. Uh, where one of OSTM is trained on a big, great data set like MS Coco, and the other is on small, like Centicap, and they're switching um, between predictions of different tokens during inference and training. So, uh, this particular work focuses on uh, solving the problem with respect to uh, sentiment based captions. And uh, here you see an example, here we can say that this is a dog resting on a computer, but we can also say a white shaggy beautiful dog lying its head on top of a computer keyboard that is more like with the sentiment uh, flavor or a sentiment vector towards a positive sentiment. Uh, if to compare two previous work which we already discussed with ours, there are uh, different, uh, there are some differences and some similarities. First of all, in our work, we haven't used customer and architecture. We haven't added some uh, sort of features we've used into the model itself. Only into the uh, only only we did it only by concatenating uh, additional features with hidden states uh, of each token and uh, changing the initial hidden state. While face cap and anti cap uh, alter uh, their architecture itself. Our dataset size is on the second place among these two datasets. But uh, Centicap used some pre-training large data, uh, like MS Coco, and we haven't done it in this way. But we had pre-trained embeddings and also pre-trained visual models. We also used emotional features and gender features, while Facecap used only emotion feature and Centicap only sentiment. Uh, in terms of data collection, uh, there is a huge story to tell because uh, we tried different datasets like MS Coco with this Centicap, but 
none of them uh, was appropriate for us and was adequate for our purposes because of either poor quality or inappropriate captions in terms of our task. And the final data was comprised from images of MDB wiki dataset and annotated in the way that each image has only one related caption that implicitly or explicitly explains the emotional attitude. And the thing is that uh, here uh, I said has one related caption and the reason for that is that from the very beginning of the project, the idea was to solve uh, the theory, or better to say, to prove it by um, using some sort of parallel clustering technique for textual and visual information. But it hard worked out, and we switched to uh, the task of image captioning, and mainly the data set was already undated and we didn't have much human resource to alter it. Uh, but the interesting stuff here is that, as we see, caption is not very bad. That we have here, for example, uh, the left bottom image. Uh, we see that there is a man and some girl, and the caption is the man is happy to see his daughter. So it explicitly helps us to understand that a man is happy to see uh, his daughter means that actually he's happy because he's seen his daughter at that particular moment. Uh, we also added uh, additional dimension to the data in terms of the sentiment, uh, which was mainly done for categorizing the data set better. And as we see, we have, uh, I'm sorry, a very small number of natural samples, but we have lots of positive and negative captions. And uh, this particular feature can be then used in the future work. Uh, for pretend models, uh, actually we can split them into two different types of models, visual and textual. For visual models, we use TresNet, V2 by He et al. and EfficientNet by Tan et al. And we also experimented with using of after encoder architecture, same as used in my previous work. Uh, so for textual data, we use an infamous Wartovec model that was introduced by Mikol et al. And there are lots of things to tell about additional biometric features, actually, uh, the process of their creation. Uh, for this process, we use three different models. Uh, first model is a Yo over 3 model, which is an object detection model that is pre-trained on wider face in our case. And we use it to crop out the faces from the images and to create new samples for two other models. Uh, one which is an efficient net on IMDb age gender data sets that predicts age and gender, and the other one is a model, the same model, with the same architecture trained on fair data sets to predict emotions. As we can see from this feature extraction scheme, we got uh, for each face uh, the actual vector of probabilities of assignments to the classes or to the model. Uh, we then uh, comprise the features based on these prediction vectors in the following manner. Uh, for gender features, we just, uh, using argmax operator, uh, we retrieve uh, the class assignment of the model. And uh, we, do, we do it for each, uh, uh, for each phase, and then we just average, we count and using frequentist approach we just uh, make some uh, probability distribution by averaging number of each uh, class relevant to gender. Uh, for emotional features we just average the emotional vectors itself. So these features mainly give us some flow of what is for example the dominant gender on the image and what is the dominant emotion on the image. Uh, in terms of training details, uh, we use a classical training validation test split. 80% of data is given for training, 10 for validation, 10 for testing. Uh, we use a beam uh, search technique with beam size of 5 for all the experiments. Uh, and we use the following matrix, blue score and perplexity. We also use Summers prop as optimizer and loss reduction technique. The models are trained with uh, the bar size of 64 for 30 epochs. Um, based on this table of experimental results, uh, we can see that actually the best model is a model which used uh, as visual decoder RSNet logits, uh, Vortovac embeddings, and emotions and gender feature. 
we chose this model to be the best one because it got the best results on all the splits. So many on chain perpacks, the validation perpacks, the overall blue, which is actually uh, the fancy name for test blue. We call it just in this way. So, and you see that Resnato just sort of work with emotions also did good on the overall results, but all the other models and models with uh, now attention, uh, they end up in quarter, they just uh, got pretty bad results in terms of perplexity and blue score. Uh, if to speak about the architecture of our model, it's fairly simple. We are not altering the OSTM architecture itself. So uh, we just use uh, just use the visual information uh, decoded by the CNN, uh, mainly encoded by the CNN as initial stage to the OSTM and concatenate our feature vectors with uh, hidden state of each word and this man learned it. Uh, so experimental results are pretty interesting. I want to take one there. So first of all, there is an effect of additional features on the image of the caption generation process. As we see for beam size uh, from three to five, we don't see any changes, mainly because beam size is more stronger to this uh, additional feature noise or additional feature information. Uh, but uh, for greedy approach, we see that results are changing. For example, here when Mayo is one, we see that man looks very, very excited. He sent to harm the other man. And for female one, we see that man looks very, very troubled. And also, Sharon features also do uh, have effect here. And the main problem with uh, such an approach is that uh, if the features are uh, generated uh, in not appropriate, not adequate error uh, way, uh, in a bad way. So if our model, uh, if our additional models are failing to capture the emotions in the right way, it can actually influence and propagate the error through the uh, main model that is used for the actual process of uh, captions generation. Uh, regarding other decoding results, very briefly, you can see more in the paper, is that here uh, we see that sometimes beam size 7, 3, and 5 does, uh, does not correspond correctly to uh, the actual true caption. But the interesting case here is the last uh, picture where we have uh, the true caption uh, that is really relevant to the image, along with the greedy caption which is relevant to the image, and two alternatives which are given from beam size 3 and beam size 5. So actually, what is some future work? Uh, we do prove our theory by such results, but there are some things to improve. First of all, we want to improve the data quality by improving the captions quality, make five captions or at least four captions per image, and each data with Flickr 11K dataset gets a bigger dataset. Uh, add sentiment related features because they also uh, do have effect on the resulting captions. And construct a specific uh, STM architecture that will mix all the biometric features along with sentiment ones. Uh, so thanks for your attention, and I guess there should be some questions and answers.